Hi, I'm Steve Adubato coming to you remotely with compelling, important educational programming with our good friend, Scott Kober, who is a partner at McCarter English, McCarter and English. It's a law firm based in Newark, New Jersey, and the chairman of the board of NJTV. Good to see you, Scott. Honored to be with you, Steve. Good to see you. Scott, um, we're going to talk about the role of public media, public broadcasting in this pandemic. Uh, we'll be seen in 2021. We're taping at the end of 2020. And also part of this other series I told you about over the weekend, we were talking democracy at a crossroads. What do you believe the larger role of public media is in a representative democracy? Well, it might sound a little cliched, but I think that uh, the role of public media is to elevate everyone's quality of life. And I think uh, public media does it generally, but I think in New Jersey, we can talk a bit about the specifics. Uh, you know, the, this past year, the focus has been on uh, the honesty, the reliability of information gathering and information delivery. And where every day there, is, uh, there are important decisions to make about for whom to vote, uh, whether to get a vaccine, whether a business is to be open, whether my business is open, to know that information. And with the regrettable waning of conventional print journalism uh, in New Jersey with uh, no uh, commercial uh, TV stations uh, over decades now, because it, it will be 50 years next year, uh, now NJTV, who's been the operator. Previously NJN, an extraordinary public television station for 40 years. Thank you, Steve. And the, uh, so the news is delivered now on diverse digital platforms uh, over uh, a cable, over the air, uh, through our spotlight function. Uh, and, uh, and people can get honest, unvarnished, reliable information. And, and obviously that's critical to uh, the uh, good functioning of a democracy. Yeah, to, to Scott's point, by the way, uh, we're not going to turn this into a commercial for public broadcasting, but check out NJ Spotlight News with Brianna Venosi every night. And also Metro Focus, which is on uh, NJTV, WNET, WLIW. Um, and, and, and by the way, this conversation, Scott, that we're having about the role of public media we've had with our president, Neil Shapiro, um, with uh, John Servideo, uh, General Manager over at uh, NGTV, Bob Feinberg, others, our chief counsel. Here's the thing that I keep thinking. When I hear people talk about fake news, enemy of the people, I, I try not to be personally offended because it's not personal, I guess. But you know better than anyone with your history with NJN coming over to this new entity, uh, NJTV, in a leading role. We have no horse in the race. We have no point of view. We don't have an audience that says, I agree with public broadcasting, because what are you agreeing with? We have every particular, every voice. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I am on my soapbox. But for folks who actually think we have a point of view, make it clear to them what our point of view is. Well, Steve, it, it's undeniable that any of us who uses an adverb or an adjective tints what we say with, with some level of opinion. And the, uh, the decision as to where news stories are placed um, has some tint of, or perspective of opinion. But the design of public media, whether it's delivered through NJTV or it's delivered through the news hour, is, is what you described, which is to try to allow people to understand through a deep dive of issues that affect them. Look, if it bleeds, it leads. We will get that news through major commercial outlets. Find it somewhere else. If you want a deep dive and, and we can mutually flatter one another, you watch Steve Adubato interview people on his various platforms. You, you read the NJ Spotlight newsletter, which speaks to issues that are important. It is difficult to address complicated issues in 140 characters. It, and you know, and I know, that over decades, some of the same gnawing problems continue to affect all of our fellow citizens, whether it's property taxes. 
infrastructure, the gateway tunnel, exactly. our economy, right. COVID. I mean, you name it. Climate cannabis, change. Cannabis. Uh, you know, the, the, if you look for the outlet to determine uh, what the governor is announcing with respect to uh, businesses or treatments or now the, uh, the delivery of vaccines, the likely reliable source will be on an immediate basis, NJTV in New Jersey right. and NJ Spotlight combined now as one entity, but to be able to get the push page. Now, one important other component, we don't have a paywall so that uh, people who want to be better educated and want to discharge their responsibilities as, citizen, as citizens uh, can access us free of charge. Now, there's a civic responsibility. Of course, we're going to shill for support from viewers like you, uh, but uh, it is delivered to uh, the public. Uh, NJN received a substantial state appropriation. Uh, NJTV doesn't benefit from an annual appropriation, though we're hoping that that may change. Right. Um, but we are, uh, uh, sadly, because we would like to be an accretive part of news delivery, we're sadly becoming uh, perhaps the most robust news delivery organization for matters relating to the state. And, it, and, and it was held by newspapers. And by the way, Neil and I talk about this all the time. Neil Shapiro, we spend so much, and we're not complaining. We have to spend a lot of our time. I would love to just interview people, go deep dive, public policy. No money, no mission. So we are fundraisers because we must. That being said, in the limited time we have left, the Learning Live initiative uh, that NJTV was engaged in, um, uh, remote learning together with the Department of Education, the state, the New Jersey Education Association. Give me 30 seconds on why that mattered so much, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic, Scott. Well, it was triage because almost immediately when uh, schools went remote, there was an identification of about 300,000 students in the state that did not have any kind of device to receive remote A huge learning. digital divide. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Correct. The digital divide, precisely. So to speak to that uh, very quickly with the NJEA and the NJDOE and NJTV acting in remarkable cooperation and not surprising cooperation, uh, we were able to uh, put on the air four hours of, of, of uh, teaching to younger students who would be the ones who were perhaps greatest at risk. And we received a great critical review. In fact, emulation is the greatest form of flattery uh, New York City contacted WNP, <laughs> as you know, uh, to uh, reprise what yep. we were doing in New Jersey and, of course, was covered by uh, major media nationally. So, listen, the bottom line with Scott Kobler is that um, all of us involved in public broadcasting, um, it's so corny to say we believe in what we're doing. I can't. Im I love being involved in the media, but I can't imagine doing it any other, on any other platform. We're a private, not-for-profit um, an entity, but we could not do what we do without the cooperation of NJT, TV and WNET, the larger public broadcasting family. And Scott Kobler has been at this for a lot of years, committed to public media, public broadcasting. Hey, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. We're honored. Steve, I'm honored. Uh, thank you for uh, what my board does to support. Thank you for management. Thank you for our on-air personalities, including yourself. Scott Kobler, Steve Adubato. will be right back right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, TD Bank, United Airlines, the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, and by Suez North America. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network. And by NJ On Air. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.